Good morning and welcome to another episode of Marketo Fu. My name is Joe Wrights and uh, we're going to just continue the conversation where we left off on the previous episode and talk a little bit about uh, the RCM or the revenue cycle model, the lead life cycle model, the buyer's journey, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, On the last episode, we, we kind of talked through um, a little bit of the theory and kind of like how you go about building it and like you know what it what what's involved what what your thinking needs to be like so um organizationally kind of where your level of understanding is where any partner helping you build the rcm needs to get to um just really understanding your your business and your processes and that will result in creating whatever the model looks like and like i said most people start from that serious decisions uh waterfall model where it's uh you know, Marketo starts with anonymous, known, engaged, qualified, sales accepted, um, and on and on. But uh, hey, <laughs> um, so so the first thing uh, you'll do, I'm going to share my screen here. You didn't know you were going to make a guest appearance on Marketo Food, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on my screen here, you uh, you see the um, the model we were building yesterday. And like I said, uh, each of these transitions, what I do is I just do a simple campaign as requested. So um, along these, uh, the, the reason you do that is just because as you go through the, the model, Marketo doesn't really care. And this is kind of the sad, unfortunate truth. Marketo doesn't really care what you put in here as long as it just makes sense uh, to the the computer that is Marketo. So um, request campaigns work because then what we're going to do is never reference these and then uh, make sure we handle each of these progressions in a smart campaign. So what that looks like is back over here in uh, in the instance, we have a whole program dedicated to lifecycle and the success path. We have you know all the, the basic transitions there and all of the, the detours, so the things that weren't on the success path. So everything that's not in green is a detour. Um, those are down here. And we manage these separately because as we move from stage to stage, uh, there might be some other things we want to do. So if we do it just on the model, each of these transitions just acts as a, uh, a smart list, so to speak, uh, kind of, or, or at least, um, yeah, yeah, pretty much a smart list. So so if something happens, then it, it moves them, but it doesn't do anything after that. So like if we wanted to, um, you know, for example, uh, let's look at, um, I think, Automation qualified to MQL is one. So we can control this the same way we would uh, would have on the model with the smart list. So if they if they become, uh, uh, there's something I have to talk through on gates here, but if they become marketing qualified, not only are we gonna change the revenue stage, we're gonna add the interesting moment. And if I had a uh, Salesforce uh, integration with our sandbox, what I would also do is kind of create a task that looks like this, that says uh, to, the, to, the lead, to the lead owner, uh, you've got a you've got a task. You've got, you know, this says two days to follow up, um, and then and then we kind of dig our hooks into uh, how we how we report on that later, and and kind of show that where the fall off is, and if if it's sales not responding to MQLs and accepting leads, maybe maybe it's something about our scoring model that we're not giving high quality leads over, and uh, and we're inundating the sales force with uh, not really qualified leads that we're saying are so there's a credibility issue so uh having an sla like that keeps kind of things in check but uh backing up to uh what i was <laughs> what i kind of skipped on to uh over was uh this gate stage so when you use a gate stage these transitions here are uh you can't use triggers they've got to be filters because it's the the nature of a gate is uh it's not listening for anything to happen. It's just if they get here, one of two things is going to happen based on something about the lead. So in this model, um, just what the organization uh, was doing was if they were a contact, they they went straight on to uh, to mark to marketing qualified. If they were a lead, they went to an inside sales team that tried to you know qualify them and convert them to a contact. Um, there are some other reasons for why contacts, and that's a really one-off thing. But I do think it's kind of cool to show how you can sort people off the success path and then put them back on um, and then report uh, phase to phase kind of like all along the way. So what, um, and I, because I don't have a, uh, 
uh, Salesforce integration and real data. I'm going to give you a screenshot of some sample data, if I can find it, where when you do the success path modeling, uh, granted, this is not a complete model. It only goes up to marketing qualified, but you can you can start to report on when they, you can see how many people are in each stage in the balance, and then how many people and automation qualified should be zero because it's a gate stage and they're going from, uh, they're pretty much instantly leaving here to go to either marketing qualified or in this model, uh, pre-sales qualified. So uh, you can also see kind of what, how many people came in and this is over uh, the current month. You can adjust the time frame like any other report in Marketo. Uh, you can see how many people went on to the next stage in the outflow, and you can see the average time it takes. And this is in uh, days, I believe. So uh, granted, you can see that this model was just recently turned on. So data starts about here <laughs> and uh, and progresses rapidly ramps up. But uh, you know, don't be put off by these numbers. This is a very large database. So 387 marketing qualified leads in a month is uh, is believable for a, a database of several million. So um, the numbers on this are not so much important, but just kind of how you can report on stage to stage. And that's that's what building the model like this will do. But uh, back over here on the uh, the actual program setup, there's, uh, you have to account for each stage, each stage transition, except anonymous. That's one that uh, Marketo handles on its own. So you start from known to engaged. Um, and then the other thing you can do is add these interesting moments on that just say, um, uh, you know, basically, um, when they came in, some some kind of date stamping. If you have a custom field, you could also uh, just do that, like uh, date first marketing qualified or uh, probably probably uh, better in the case of date they first buy um, or first purchase or whatever when they convert to close one. But the point is that you can add any kind of robust flow logic here like you would to any other smart campaign. Okay. So as soon as I find my camera, there I am. Uh, yeah, so that was um, kind of a peek behind the curtain between bridging the theory behind building an RCM and kind of how to actually go about doing it. But um, this has, uh, it, this is kind of where, like like I was giving you a preview, this is kind of where all the good reporting starts, uh, where you can start to see velocity through the funnel and, uh, and create that vision for like what that success path is. Um, but yeah, this has been another episode of Marketo Foo. My name has been Joe Wrights and we will talk again soon.